In today's video, I want to give you guys a quick commentary on the 2021 budget speech. My name is Henry Huvi and I've been in the accounting industry since 2008. I'm the owner of SA Accounting Network and we've got a network of many different accountants over South Africa that can help you with your small business and all the tax related mud matters for individuals. So if you are looking for an accountant, our details are in the description below, so make sure to get in touch with us. Let me head on to my computer and then I can show you what I've prepared for you for today. So on my commentary that I want to do about our budget speech, there was a couple of small things that stood out um, in the budget. Actually not small things, they were actually quite big things. So the first thing is when our minister talked about the deficit. <clears throat> so the first thing they said that our budget revenue um, is 1.36 trillion rand. The budget spend was 2.05 trillion rand. So it means that we can have a shortfall of almost 700 billion rand. So you can see over here on this um, revised estimate that they give it. So these are just a few snippets from the material that they published on the, uh, on the Treasury's website. So you can see the revenue, the estimate you can, that it's going to be 1.36 trillion. You can see our expenses 2052 trillion. And then you can see that we've got a budget balance of minus 700 billion rand. So that is a lot of money to be short on. And just remember that that um, short form, uh, they basically going to have to borrow that money to get that money back into, um, or to get the money available for us to to, um, to spend on those things. So you can see on the right hand side, there's this uh, a consolidated government expenditure, expenditure sheet. So you can see where all the money is actually going to. And something that's interesting is the normal expenses is 1.8 trillion rand. Then you can see over there where it says debt service cost. It means that that is the cost that we are paying to borrow that 700 billion rand that we short. So we're paying in 232 billion rand in debt service cost, which is quite scary. Uh, but also something that I took out there out of the budget speech itself, he said there on point number seven, said we must advise this house that we now expect to collect two, 1.21 trillion in taxes during 2020-21, which is about 230 billion rand less than our 2020 budget expectation. This is the largest tax fall, tax shortfall on record. So in our record of our country, this has been the biggest shortfall on revenue collections that we've ever had so far. So let me jump down to the nitty gritty because this is all a lot of technical stuff and there's people that, that um, economists and stuff can, can get really excited about. But what about the man on the street? That is what I want to look at quickly on the next slide. So this is where there's a little bit of good news for individuals. So they say the personal income tax bracket will be increased by 5%, which is more than inflation. This will provide 2.2 billion rand in tax relief. Most of that relief will reduce the tax burden on the lower middle income class. So you can see over here there's a tax table that they give us to say the 2020-21 tax year. You can see that we, um, from zero up to 205,900 rand, we were paying 18%. And you can see now for the 2021-22 tax year, they moved that upper bracket from 205,000 up to 216,000 rand. So that is that 5%. And you can see all the other brackets moved up with the same percentage that it moved up. So what does it mean? So you can see that this tax threshold right at the bottom, there's a little thing over there that this says that if you are below the age of 65, you only start paying tax once your annual income is more than 83,100 rand. And you can see now at the moment with that, with that adjusted rebates that they gave us, remember there is a rebate that they give us over here, of about 14,958 for the current year. For next year, they moved that up to 15,714, which means that only once your annual income goes above 87,300 rand, then you're going to start paying tax. So I did a quick calculation, just out of interesting sake to see what the difference is going to be in your salary. So you can see in the current financial year or the 2020-21 financial year, if you earn a salary of 15,000 rand, you can see the tax, if you use those tax tables, works out to 1,453 rand, which means you will have a net salary of 13,546. We have a new financial year starting March next year, or March this year, 2021-22, on the same salary, you're going to be paying 1,390 rand worth of tax, which means your net salary is going to be 13,609, which will mean that you would have a tax saving of 63 rand per month on a salary of 15,000 rand. So that is, I think if you work it out to a yearly figure, I think that tax saving that they give you is about 700 rand. 
So there, so there's a little bit of a saving over there, 60 rand. Mm, I will still take it, but it's not, um, it's not a lot, especially if you look at those type of salaries. <coughs> we'll dig a bit deep into that just now. Another comment that I took out of here from the from the budget itself is that the personal income tax brackets and rebates would increase by five percent, providing relief to households by ensuring that inflation does not automatically increase the individual tax burden. The adjustment will reduce the tax burden by 2.2 billion rand, which we talked about now. And then just the thing that I wanted to highlight here is an inflatory adjustment will apply to the value of medical tax credits. If I remember correctly, they didn't adjust these tax credits for a year or two. So this is a little bit of good news. So they say it will increase from 319 rand per person to 332 rand. So if I look at my example of here, if you earn 15,000 rand and you belong to medical aid and you're one person, it means that you will get a tax deduction or tax credit on that 1,400 rand at the moment of 319 rand, but now they moved that up to 332 rand. So there's a little bit of a saving. Remember that is per person. So if you have four people on the medical aid, it will be 332 rand times two, and then plus 224 rand, this one down here at the bottom times two. So that will be your tax credit. Uh, let's quickly see. Uh, what is the other thing? They said the minimum value for paid up retirement annuities has not been adjusted since 2007 or 2008. This study will increase from 7,000 to 15,000 rand on the 1st of March. So that's something small. It's not something that's relevant to a lot of people, but there is a little something over there. Um, just something else that I picked up while I was busy going through the, um, through the budget speech itself. They said that unemployment, um, so this is quite interesting, that our unemployment rose to 30.8%. The number of unemployed jumped from 4.3 million to 6.5 million. So that is quite a big jump in the unemployment figure. So let's quickly see. So this is just another extract, the same thing that I talk about now. This means that if you're earning um, the, the 87,300, you will have at least the extra 750 rent in your pocket. So remember that is for the full year. So that will then work out to the 63 rent as discussed. Then there's a lot of random things that went up a few levels. Levels will increase by 27 cents a litre, comprising 50 cents per litre for the general fuel levy, 11 cents for the road accident fund, and 1 cent for carbon fuel levy. An 18% increase in excise due to some alcohol and tobacco products. And then as from today, this is quite interesting, that if you drink beer, it will cost another 14 cents, wine 26 cents, sparkling wine 86 cents, spirits 5 rand 50, cigarettes 1 rand 39, um, pipe tobacco 47 cents and then cigars this will be 7 rand 71 rand more expensive mm. which is probably not good news for all the drinkers and smokers out there so take it easy let's have a quick look so this was an interesting table that i came across as well so they proposed tax schedule tape 4.4 so here they give us a little bit of information as well so this is on annual income so let's quickly have a look so during the 2021 2020-21, if you earned 85,000 rand per year, your tax would have been 304, 342 rand. You can see now, if you earn 90,000 rand, you can see your tax went down from mm, 1,200 rand down to 486 rand. And you can see then it goes up, up, up. But like I said, the higher you go into the tax bracket, the bigger that saving becomes. But if you look percentage-wise, you can see, obviously, for somebody that earns 85,000 rand, they've got a 100% saving in tax. So you can see marginally that amount becomes smaller and smaller. So the benefit that you get <coughs> is becoming smaller, the bigger your income is. Um, so that was just something interesting. So you can see in which one of these tax brackets you fall. So if you earn 250,000 rand, it means that your tax change, you will save 1,580 rand for the year which will probably be about 100 and something rent per month extra that you will have in your pocket. So we'll still take it. Um, here was this uh, interesting tax table that they showed over the estimates of individuals and taxable income. So this is just the number of um, registered individuals in each of those categories. So people earning from zero to 80,000 rand per month is 7 million. Then they can, oh, be, uh, there's 80, between 80,000 and 150,000. You can see 1.8 million, then it goes all the way down. So you can see that the total number of taxpayers is 14 million rand. 
million people. They can see people earning more than one and a half million rand per year. There's 113,000 of those people there. 113,192. And something that's interesting, if you look at those guys, pay 26% of our country's tax or individual tax that they contribute to. Mm, yeah, so that is um, it's quite a scary st statistic that only 113,000 people in a country contributes a 26% of all tax that is um, and that is paid um, for by individuals. <clears throat> Let's quickly have another quick look over here. There was something interesting that I saw, the economic growth in selected countries. So they compared a lot of different countries. You can see worldwide, 2018, there was a 3.5% growth. 2019, 2.8. You can see 2020 estimate is 3.5, where South Africa is down here at the bottom with a minus 7.2. And then this is the forecast for the next two years. They said 3.3 increase, and then the year after that, 2.2. Um, it will be really, really great if we can have those type of growth figures. Um, I think that was the major things on the, on, on, the, on the budget. There was really nothing interesting this year that happened. Then there was just a couple of small things that popped up here and there when I went through the full budget commentary. I'll maybe put the link down in the description of the video as well. There were one or two things that jumped out at me that might be worth just looking at as well. If you look at tax incentives, there's a certain thing which they call a Section 12J company where you get certain tax incentives to invest in those companies. So here they say that the sunset date for the venture capital companies incentive which was initiated in 2009 to encourage return investments in smaller businesses will not be extended beyond June 2021. So they, what they wanted to do is they, that you get certain deductions if you invest in those type of companies for tax purposes. So they, they, they were talking of possibly extending that period but now they came back and said no, June 2021, that is the end of the line. They're not going to allow those tax deductions after that year. Um, something jumping back to our personal tax, which is also a little bit scary. They say in this coming fiscal year, SARS will establish a dedicated unit to improve compliance of individuals with wealth and complex financial arrangements. <coughs> this first group of taxpayers have been identified and will receive communication during April 2021. In support of these efforts, we request that this House to approve an additional spending allocation of $3 billion over the medium term. So what that means is that the receiver of revenue wants to open up a new department that's going to go off the high net individuals and people with complex tax affairs. Um, so that is quite interesting. I mean, if they're willing to spend 3 billion rand to get the department up and running, um, I'm sure that there must be money for them to be made. Um, something else that they mentioned over here, uh, let's quickly see that they were talking about um, um, uh, companies, so let's quickly see, there was something here um, that they said that they want to reduce the tax rate. Um, let's quickly see, no, they said Budget 20 re re revealed that the government intends to restructure the corporate income tax system in a revenue neutral manner. This requires broadening the tax base with limiting assessed losses and interest expense and deductions to ensure the proposals are affordable. Since February 2020, many businesses have either closed down or in financial distress as a result of pandemic-related restrictions. Government has therefore postponed the introduction of these two measures until 2022. And then um, they were talking about and that they were going to be reducing the tax rate. Let's quickly see. Um, so in February 2020, a discussion document on limiting the excessive interest deduction was released for public comment following by public consultation. After assessing the comments, government proposed to expand the scope of the current interest limitation rules to include some similar interest items to adjust the fixed rate ratio limitation for net interest expense to 30% of earnings and to restrict only connected party interest rather than total interest. So it basically just means that if you pay interest that they want to limit the amount that they will allow us the deduction. And the other thing that they were talking about is that they want to limit the amount of losses that you can carry forward from one year to the next year. But in the same breath, they said that they're going to lower the tax rate for companies for down to 27%. But that might only happen in 2022. Um, in 2022, um, before they will actually reduce the tax rate. But then the limitations that they put on the interest and your assessed losses, they say that those two should compensate for each other. 
Um, then there was just another announcement quickly, so I can announce that an annuitation of Provident Funds takes place 1 March 2021, and Provident Fund members will continue to enjoy tax deduction on their contributions. In addition, the National Treasury will this week publish draft amendments to the Regulation 28 for public comment, the proposed amendments to Regulation 28 to make it easier for retirement funds to increase investment in infrastructure. So that was quite an interesting thing that they were talking about. It's been in the courts for quite a few years, no, for quite a few months, <coughs> where they're talking about changing that regulation, um, which I personally don't think is a good thing, but that's just my opinion. Um, so yeah, so that was, I think, our budget commentary for this year. It was really not much happening in the budget-wise. I think um, a lot of people expected a lot worse during the budget for this year, at the budget speech from, from our minister. Um, but thankful, we're really grateful that they didn't change a lot. It's so scary to see how much money we're going to be short um, for the current year, or that they're predicting that we're going to be short on. And um, I think, obviously, they have to get that money somewhere, so they're going to have to borrow money. And um, yeah, so if you like the video, remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and share the video with your friends. If you want to contact us, our contact number at the office is 0217 or you can send us a WhatsApp. Um, 082 Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you again soon.